right guys, what's happening? Sean Ames from Heart of America FPV, and I've got an announcement to make. All right, so that's it, it's official. I have made the jump and I am officially now running Falco X Flight One hardware. Super pumped to be a part of what they are doing. Really is about a year ago, I did an experiment uh, for a while where I switched everything out and I ran Falco X for a while. I liked it, but uh, I ended up running into some issues at IO. To be fair, I really didn't get to learn the gear as well as I should have prior to IO. There were a lot of things. I was experimenting with some less than desirable ESC settings and that was before Flight One came out with their dynamic filter which really made all the difference. It just took me a while to take the dive again. Two or three weeks ago I stuck one of my old millivolts on one of my builds and started running it and this is the one I'm probably 60 packs deep on this drone and it held up super duper well. I spent some time figuring it out noticed that it does do all the functions that I needed to do. So after that I put some time into trying to discover what I would need to do to get it, the builds to work for me. I have some relatively unique desires when it comes to my equipment, specifically kind of based around pit switches. At this point in time, Flight One has not released their newest flight controller. It's, it's with an H7 processor. They've got this sucker on the way, and uh, it seems like it's going to change the way that we look at the capabilities of a flight controller. So I'm super pumped about it. The new H7 flight controller will have a built in pit switch. For now, luckily, I've got a couple couple dozen of the Heart of America pit switches left. I was able to stick those in there. But now before we get into the build and all the different components in the build, I want to tell you something that when I was getting all this put together, I did mess something up. In doing so, I decided to leave it so we could play a little bit of a game. I've got from a year ago when I tried running Flight 1, I was running 30 by 30 gear. Um, it's not the case anymore, but I still have in the wrapper one of their Revolt lights that you have to like hard solder everything. I've got one of those in the package and so we're gonna play a little game here what I need you to do in the comments of this video is leave a comment and let me know what did I mess up about this build that still needs to be fixed it's still messed up so um, what did I mess up and what's gonna give me some trouble if I don't fix it and let me know in the comments I'll run a random comment picker until it selects a correct comment I'll shoot you a message and I will mail you this sucker so you can try flight one for yourself if you haven't already it is better and I think think now it's so much better that it's worth the trouble to get it built out and when the H7 comes out it'll be a no-brainer so as you guys know it's no secret I run the 533 switchback as my frame I've been doing an experiment without SFGs for a few days now I'm pretty certain I'm gonna go back to them I really like the SFGs it makes this frame an absolute tank it's already super durable but I literally never break arms if I've got the SFGs on which is really kind of bananas been running it without them for a couple of days here and I'm going to give it a couple more just to make sure. The 533 switchback, 45 degree camera mount. I like this one because it gets the plug of the camera out a little more. I think it provides adequate protection. I run this version of the turtle mode flipper dipper deal and it's worked good for me. But I want to show you a little bit about what's under the hood here. So I'll set this to the side. On my top plate, this is how I've got my top plate set up. It's essentially video world here. So obviously I've got my VTX and switch and everything. One of the things that really held me up from making the switch to Flight One and not waiting for the H7 was the fact that you've got to use plugs and it's two different plugs to get to your VTX and your pit switch. So if you look here, I've got a piece of Heart of America race wire. The VTX is on the bottom. That's the TBS HV race, I think is God's gift to all VTXs. It's got an instant boot up time, 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. It's got this UFL clamp, which I think is what every VTX needs. A little closer here. There it is. So I've got the VTX on the bottom, then I've got a piece of race wire, and then I've got my pit switch on top. So what I do here, I'm coming out of the pit switch for power, 
and then from my VTX, since it's got a plug and it's got a different plug than what comes on the harness. The harness that comes with the Flight 1 millivolt comes with this. It's the old style, five pin style. Now it's a seven pin style. What I have to do then is I come out of the plug on my VTX and I'm going obviously power and ground into my pit switch for the smart audio and the video. So I don't have to splice anything. I use this uh, piece of race wire to solder the VTX end of the video and the smart audio. And then I'll come out of the plug on the flight controller. Ta-da. It's got plugs there. So I'll come out of that plug. I'll cut off the connector on the end. And I'll wire up, obviously, ground power from the flight controller of that plug. And then down here, I'll connect the video feed and the smart audio feed to that race wire. And then still, I can unplug that plug from the side of the flight controller and completely remove this. Secondly, though, I do need need the pin IO and that's a separate plug on the flight controller so I'm using all four plugs on the side of the flight controllers you can see the top right one closest to the top plate that is the pin toggle that's what we use to activate the pit switch so that is going out and connecting to there as well so I do have to unplug two plugs to remove the top plate but it totally works works well for that so the components are the millivolt and I got the schizo versions which look awesome because they're black and then uh, the TBS Unify HV race I put a little piece of heat shrink because I reversed the direction of the UFL connector coming off and it's got the UFL clamp obviously to a foxier lollipop they are on par with the best antennas on the market and they're half the price so they are the ones I love so that's my top plate what else on this build obviously the hobby wing 20 by 20 40 amp ESC I've broke literally probably 10 flight controllers I've broken to every one ESC I've broken in the olden days that was unheard of you always broke ESCs ESCs would fail at an incredible rate compared to anything else I'm running the Foxier Predator Nano. Great camera. does everything I need it to do. It connects up just fine. I do do a little bit of splicing and repinning so that I can have my little controller connection on the bottom there. So this these cameras come with one of these little push button controllers. This allows you to plug it up. But, uh, but yeah, this camera has been super solid for me. I personally run the 1.8 millimeter lens. Powertrain. I still am running some of the Hobbywing motors from time to time. They are definitely not as fast as these guys. These are the Heads Up FPV 1960 KV 2207 motors. These things are absolute tanks. They will take a ton of heat. I have broken props, flown back to myself. I've had motors that were absolutely scorching hot they would physically burn me if I touched them and uh, these suckers don't burn up I mean I'm sure you can burn them up actually I had a uh, quad fail in Phoenix when I was out there visiting Mondo the whole thing caught on fire and those motors absolutely did burn up these motors have been absolutely stellar for me they look good they're tough they're powerful I still have a ton of hobbywing motors that's what's on our entire team fleet is the hobbywing motors me personally I have a lot of hobbywing motors actually that I bought myself I'm keeping those around and I flew those when I first built out this quad here I actually had it with the hobbywing motors on it I decided to switch them out just to see how it handled these motors with flight one I wasn't surprised but it does run great with the heads up motor and obviously if you're running the heads up motor i'm also running hq props I, I won't say i'll always run the heads up prop specifically i did try the r35 that surge was uh, giving some people some free samples of from HQ and uh, that's that's what's on this these gray props I'll be honest. I'm pretty impressed with those props. I don't know that they're by numbers This is an r38. This is an r35 theoretically This might not have the same top end, but this felt a lot snappier to me I'm not as fast as some of the guys that can get the full top end speed out of this setup and these props So I might uh, dabble with the r35s if they're out yet I don't know if they're on the market yet or not, but uh, I was pretty impressed by that prop. That's the build for 2020 if we ever have a drone racing season i'm really hopeful as soon as i can i'm going to get out there i've been putting tons of packs through this global qualifier track all right that's it that's the build guys super pumped um a couple other things just about flight one that helped change my mind the big one that really stood out to me there's a few auto quopa quopa auto Koopa. what i don't even turtle mode they have an auto turtle mode that is bananas it works freaking 95 percent of the time and it works super well to me that's not a reason that i would choose flight one but every time i just arm my quad and it automatically gets itself upright it just makes me happy <laughs> 
So that's something that is super cool is the auto, the auto turtle mode. The other thing that's been very, very impressive to me is the crash response. I assume that all flight software is doing something now to where it detects when you're crashing and it tries to like right the ship essentially. But I noticed this just in the first couple of packs, I would like bounce off a gate. The quad would literally like kind of like right itself before hitting the ground, which made a huge difference. Obviously, if you hit the ground, you're more likely to eject a bat battery, you're more likely to break something, less controlled, that kind of thing. So whatever they're doing in regard to the crash detection and that kind of thing in the software is really impressive. Ultimately to me and what I've always liked about Flight 1 is it just feels more connected. I feel like with Beta Flight I'm throwing the quad at a gate, pointing it in a certain direction and I'm just kind of throwing it. But all, you have all these other forces that are acting on the quad. With Flight 1 I feel like I'm piloting the quad. I feel like that I am guiding it to where I want it to go. Now I think it's fair to say that you know maybe I just don't know how a tuna quad I would say that that's highly likely but for me I've never been able to get that kind of like connected feel out of beta flight personally then there's also just the the beta flight stuff I'm a really really loyal person this part's kind of hard for me like I want to stand up for the beta flight project I think that they've done a lot of good things for our hobby but I've had some interactions with not all but with some of the devs recently that just kind of made me lose faith in that project a little bit people are having trouble with VTX tables and I brought that up to the beta flight devs and they just like wouldn't hear it. In general I think the beta flight project has lost its way a little bit. They've moved beyond trying to create flight software that is good for the community. They are kind of stuck in their ways just kind of doing what they want to do and uh, they're not really wanting or willing to listen to any feedback. So that's why I'm pumped about flight one. I feel like Preston and those guys over there are really listening to the pilots and getting all, all these features in they've implemented in their software you've got quad select now so I can run up to six different quads in like a team racing format obviously they've got pin toggle so I can turn a pit switch on and off that's exciting uh, the one thing I, I kind of I'm hoping that they're going to get going is right now if your quad is not selected you can still turn the video on on it for team racing that's something that needs to be changed but like I said I, I feel pretty confident that they're going to listen to their users and their pilots do what needs to be done so that's it guys that is my my fleet. This is the second one technically that I have. I'll probably clean this one up a little bit because I've been abusing it pretty good, but I've got uh, four more to build out. Speaking of that, at some point in the next couple of days, I'm going to be putting together a live stream where I'm going to sit down and build one of these quads from scratch. So I invite you to check that out, see the process I go through and, and that kind of thing. But guys, I hope this helped you out. Once again, let me know in the comments uh, what I messed up on this build so that uh, I can choose you to win this flight controller. I'll mail it to you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for checking this out. We'll catch you next time on Heart of America FPV. Later.